wilted. Okay, we're recording, we're recording. I have wilted. We've both wilted. It's really hot today. It is the wilting times. It was the best of times, it was the melting times. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it is considerably hotter elsewhere in the world than it is here, and we don't know hot under any circumstances. Uh, I swear to God, steel boats can get warm it's on the inside still pretty fun. bloody quickly when it's the sun is up. It's up there. Yeah. Still fairly early, but not up as early. Not as early. Till now. Not as early as it should have been. Yeah. Well, it's, that's my fault. That's my fault. I didn't say anything. But I admit that it's my fault. Did not get a lot of sleep last night. Under these sunglasses, you would see that one eye keeps getting stuck closed and the other one's opening. Like I'm, I'm individually alternating between eyeballs. My tired <coughs> Michael is a specific kind of Michael. Hmm? <laughs> tired Michael is a specific kind of Michael. A specific Michael. kind of Michael that um, Joe finds quite hilarious. I've got a little tiny spider on my forehead. You also got a fly in your beard. I've got a fly in my beard. Wonderful. I am clearly. A habitat. A habitat. For uh, Lepidoptera. Anyway. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to another video. We are on the. I don't even know where we are. Well, we're on the Great Ooze. We are above Brown Hills uh, Sluice Lock uh, Staunch. That's the one, Brown Hills Staunch. Just by the Pike and Eel pub or just beyond it on the Gobra Moorings? Yes, and just over from where we were yesterday, just over the. Um, Greenwich medium, oh, the yeah. prime meridian. I was very excited when yeah, we crossed that. We are, we are in the west again. Yeah. We were in the east, now we're back in the west. We're in our normal hemisphere instead of the alternate one. Arbitrary lines have been crossed. Will they be crossed again? We shall find out. Um, we're also facing the wrong direction because when we were mooring up last night, the boat got spun around by the current of the river. Very gentle current. <laughs> But Gentle, but forceful enough that it wasn't going to let me do anything about it, with just, just my body weight. It's fine, but it means we have to turn around, and there's some fishermen just opposite us, so we can't actually just spin in place. No, we're going to come across, push forward, get down into the little harbor there by the pike and eel, and do a rotation it. there, hopefully okay. avoid the swimmers, and, uh, and, 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 you know, and, and or, well, make some chum. Uh, continue towards Huntington. And then continue towards Huntington, which is our goal for today. A place where we can have a little bit of internet and a train station. And yesterday, so I, it's, I've looked it up and it's about 3 hours 45 minutes. Based on yesterday's timings, I would say it's probably nearer 5 hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, we won't have the 4 mile an hour speed limit that will undershoot by half a mile an hour. No, but we've got some locks, so it just depends how busy they are and if That's they're set in our favor. So, wish us luck. And, um... Just check in that Double recording. check we're recording. <laughs> yeah, wish us luck and, uh, and, and hope we get there. Also, possibly some more seals along the way, you never know. That'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. Alright then. Alright. Let's go. Cool. They'd have to have made it up the Brown House Stunch, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Michael spins the boat around outside the Pike and Eel Marina. There's quite a few people out enjoying the river already this morning. And then it's back past the very peaceful Gober Moorings where we stayed last night. We soon pass another gober mooring, and this one's on the edge of a field, which I'm sure George would have preferred. But we were so tired after our cruise yesterday, we just stopped at the first spot that we found. Uh, 
It's a Sunday today and there's definitely a lot of weekend traffic out. There's some more visitor moorings here in the village of Holywell and there's a pub here called the Old Ferry Boat Inn which does seem to suggest that there must have been a ferry crossing here at some point. We've caught up with a narrowboat travelling in front of us. This could prove to be very handy for the locks that are coming up. Just before we reach St Ives, we pass the Joneses Boatyard. It first opened in 1946 and it's believed to be England's oldest inland marina. Remember when I said this section of river seemed busy today? Well I was right. When we arrive at St Ives Lock we find ourselves behind three boats that are going up and there are more boats waiting to come down, so it's a little while before it's our turn. Still, that means there's lots of extra hands around to help operate the lock. These gates have rather useful chains on them to stop them swinging open or closed when you don't want them to. The locks are rather unusual shape too. Beyond the guillotine gate it widens so the first boat in can move into the recess to make room for more boats. We even managed to squeeze in a third boat behind us. And of course, there's now even more boats waiting to come down when we leave. Ahead is St Ives, which makes sense as that was St Ives Lock. We spend the next 20 minutes trying to work out how many were going to St Ives, although that was probably a different St Ives of course. The bridge here is incredibly picturesque and that building in the middle is actually a chapel. Apparently there are only four bridges in England that have their own chapels. How pretty does St Ives look? There's lots of mooring options here too. We aren't able to stop today as there's no station so we push on towards Huntington. This is definitely a place to stop on our way back though. And just like that, we're back into the countryside. And if there weren't enough mooring options in St Ives, there's some more here in Noblesfield. It's just a mile from St Ives to the next lock at Hemingford. On the approach to the lock you're directed around a little island.
Hemingford Lock is another one with the unusual D shape. The downstream gates are V gates and there's an electric guillotine gate upstream. The gate is timed so it only opens a few inches to allow the lock to fill. And then once the water is almost all of the way up, the gate can be fully opened. Now we've got another mile or so to travel to get to Horton Lock. This riverside church is St James's in Hemingford Grey, and the rather grand looking building next to it is Hemingford Grey House. There's lots of mooring space here too, so this is another place we need to stop at on the return trip. The boat that we've been sharing locks with decides to stop just below Horton Lock. These moorings are actually on a little island, so they must be lovely and quiet, even though there can't be much to explore. With our travelling companions moored up, I'm left to set Horton Lock on my own. You can see how busy the lock bridge is. It's right next to Horton Mill, which is a National Trust site and clearly very popular. When the paddles are opened on the lower gates, these little red extensions pop up, which makes it really easy to see if you've left a paddle open in error. Can we just take a second to appreciate how much George is loving his life right now? Some volunteers have planted this mini wildflower meadow on the side of the lock and it's just so pretty. Now we have three miles to travel to get to Huntingdon, where we'll hopefully find a mooring.
Just beyond the Whiten moorings is the Hartford Marina, and from here at least, it looks huge. We're now passing the village of Hartford, which is on the outskirts of Huntington. The first visitor mooring spaces we find are full, and as there's no Wi-Fi here either, I guess we'll be pushing on to Gumpster. So we were ready to stop about two hours ago, and <laughs> we've just stopped. Two hours, One walk lock. and a half. Where'd you have half a lock? I don't know, with the lock and the distance back, the bridges, etc. We got to um, Huntingdon, which is where we were hoping to stop. And there were a couple of okay moorings, um, but one of them was full, and the other one was pretty full. But also, once we got on there, we squeezed on by the skin of our teeth. Yeah. And there was no Wi-Fi. No, none at all. Which we could live with, except for Michael's got a meeting tomorrow, which he needs Wi-Fi for. Yeah. So, so we thought we'd go on um, one more lock. And there's these kind of three, like there's the Huntington Town moorings, and then there's the God Manchester moorings, and then there's these Gobo moorings at the bottom of the field. And all of them are like appropriate for what we need right now. Yeah. Um, but, but didn't want to go through all three of them and get to the last one and find out that there wasn't an opportunity. So when we were coming up the lock here, which was really hard for Joe to get closed, and in fact, you couldn't get it closed. No, well, I could have probably exerted myself and done it, but there was a dad and a son there. Yeah. And they were really kind of did the other thing. And, and they, they were all on. keen. So I thought, just yeah. let them do this one. And they did, but they struggled with it. Yeah, but they did a good job because I was like, oh, thank you for closing Because otherwise you'd have been awful by it. Yeah. So that led us to get up here, and just as we got up, it was like, what are we going to do about the moorings? Now, there are, on the Goba map, some Gumpster. Gumpster town moorings that Which are... Which is just down that way, yeah. down like this little arm. So I went to walk down there, and I couldn't really see them because they, half of them are out of action because they've got this, like, orange netting uh, over the bollards that are leaning. And then there was this sign that I just saw the back of, and I leaned around, and it said, oh, no, these are 48-hour moorings. But... <laughs> They're just completely overgrown. So, yeah. I mean, we could have gone down there at a push, but this is better. Yeah. Well, and a boat left as you were as you were walking. I'm I'm here, and you're radioing me to tell me about the mornings. And and you're like, like, I don't care. I'm like, I, I, I just I need to I can't I can't stop you from talking. George. But I need to stop you from talking to me so I can tell you that the boat's moving and I'm going to be able to get on the morning. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's you going? Right there. The there we go. Good dog. So ultimately, I backed up around here, and a gentleman on a boat behind us jumped out and grabbed the center line for me, and we had to sort of move this uh, boat a little bit further forward to loosen it up and make it so that we could fit in. But we fit in, and George has decided to grow up a GoPro battery and be naughty, and now he's taking his ball. 
George. Oh, we thought he was being good. He wasn't. He was just he's just good. been. A, he's been manipulative to everybody today. He's just been like, "Please take me, take me away. These people are crazy." So now he's sitting on the side with his ball in his mouth, just waiting for a pedestrian to come along to try and manipulate them into taking him home. So I have vowed after today. I mean, it's been lovely, really lovely. Michael's tired because he didn't get much sleep. But other than that, it's lovely. But I vowed not to move again on a Sunday because it is a bit crazy around here. Right now, it's you know it's summertime, so it's yeah, it's understandable warm. that people are. The out. water is obviously swimming temperature There's because so people many, are swimming. So many swimmers. And uh, and the water quality around here must be awfully good because the water is really clear. Yeah. And so you understand it, uh, but it's clear that that weekend boating is a major hobby around here. Which is fine. There's a major amount of boats. And it's brilliant that people are using it because it is generally quite quiet down here, but it just. It's nice when it's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you've got the opportunity, move on weekdays. Yeah, so I think we'll do that from now and if we can. Also, the locks here are D-shaped. And it says D-shaped in the book. And we're like, what is a D-shaped lock? It's D-shaped, right? obviously. And then we get there. And like, sure enough, it's D-shaped. Like, there's one straight edge and then there's one bent But it's edge. like a little D, not a big D. Yeah, so you can you can take your boat with the stalk. and put it into the small portion of the D. And then you've got a longer boat that can come in inside of it. And we've had to squeeze a couple of small boats in between. It's good because uh, you can get like three or four little boats. You could get in. two narrow boats and possibly a third narrow boat if, if it was short, short in yeah. length up. But you can also squeeze in some of the other boats. But the thing is that doing that, coordinating that, involves making sure that at least one boat goes in and moves sideways and ties up in the D portion. Um, and then the other boat is the one that will end up having to leave because the other boat will be up at the guillotine. And when the guillotine opens, the other boat will screw itself all over the front of the lock yeah, <laughs> as the current a comes in. Yeah, yeah, most of them had like a really long delay, the guillotine. But this one, like the light went out really early and it was a bit deep, but no, it says I can, and so I pressed it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I better stop now. Because I'm, I'm But like, I could have just put it straight up I'm, I'm trying as fast as I can to wrap the rope a second time so I can get a grip because the front of the boat is just going sideways. And at least it wasn't in, in I think it was the second lock of the day, there was the boat of, there was the sort of little higher boat where... Uh, well, there were six crew. Six, six people in there? Six crew, and not one of them thought to come and help me with the lock. So I, well, I, I told them I, they had to. To be fair, I don't think that they sort of have done it before. But um, <laughs> but they pulled in, and uh, because the, the guy who was driving was having so much problem keeping that thing moving in a straight line. But they pulled in, got to the side, tied up, and then, you know, there's the six people sitting there, and then the, the guillotine opens, and my rope was my line was on but it wasn't double wrapped so it starts pulling out of my hand and it's yanking me forward and the front's going over like this and i'm like we're going to pretty much pendulum straight into that boat oh dear. <laughs> if i don't sort of whip the boat the line so i started trying to do this rodeo thing to get it around and finally got it around a bollard pulled it tight and it's like okay now we're staying in place hey. and they're all just standing there going like hmm, that must be something that is normal and i'm like nope I... so now i gotta watch some people's stuff because yeah. i told them that i would watch their stuff we should have told them just to bring it in here yeah that's fine i'm gonna sit outside and watch some stuff um, i'll make us some lunch and then you can go and have a nap sounds good yeah okay teamwork so that's where we're at uh, George is sitting over staring at me menacingly with a look on his face well, like, I better get this bulk. There's a massive field. That you're going to walk into later? Later. Sounds good. I'll be asleep. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Give us... Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity for our time-lapse videos. And of course, click that bell if you want to get notifications.